Hey guys, it's DT. Welcome back to another one of my unboxing videos. So today I wasn't actually planning on making a video. However, this thing just showed up on my doorstep. So I thought we'd open it up on the channel and share it with you guys. So this is the brand new Wolverine bust from Sideshow Collectibles. I know what you guys are thinking, another Wolverine statue. I actually thought the same thing myself when I was buying this thing. But this one had a few things going for it. Uh, it is one third scale, meaning it's a little bit bigger than the other Wolverines that I have and it is sculpted by the great Daniel Bell. That, along with the price tag, it was $250. Uh, I couldn't pass it up. Plus, I thought it'd be cool for you guys to see. So I'm not really into busts. I much prefer a full-bodied statue. However, I do have a couple life-size busts on the way. Uh, I'm not really sure where those are gonna go in my house. So obviously, this is much smaller. Uh, it's probably gonna go on my desk. So we're gonna open this up and see if I made a good decision. So this is a much more manageable box than we're used to seeing from Sideshow. Looks like we get an art box as usual. Uh-oh, we have a damaged bag here. Here is a look at the art box. Uh, we've got the uh, X symbol here on the back and we've got the claw marks. However, there are four claw marks. Wolverine only has three. So uh, that's interesting. I guess he could have done one with one hand and three with the other. You know, I guess we can't be too hard on them just for the box. And on the top, we have the Wolverine logo. Looks like your typical sideshow statue in the styrofoam. Okay, and let's see what's inside. Okay, guys, and here's what we get. Here is a look at his upper torso and the base, which is all one piece. We do get his right arm attached to the body. As you can see on the bottom, uh, they made 750 of these. This is number 176. Mine is a little sticky here around the sides where the glue kind of seeped out. First time I've had that issue. I don't think it should be too big of a problem. Can't really see too much of his back muscles. Here's where his left arm keys in and there's a look at his big right arm. His left arm comes separate. You've got a big key where it keys into his shoulder and here's where his forearm keys in. Pretty cool. Um, as you can see right here where his shoulder pad meets his arm, it doesn't really touch his arm. Just something I thought I'd point out. Here are his claws and forearms. Both his left and right arm are connected. And he's got these really long claws. They feel kind of plastic. They don't feel like metal. As you can see, you can kind of move them a little bit, which can be a good thing. When it comes to bumping polystone claws, uh, you gotta be careful. The claws here on the right hand look a little bit off to me. They're not quite spaced out perfectly. Doesn't quite look right to me. And finally, our last piece is the portrait. And it's the mask portrait, very similar to other Wolverine mask portraits. His teeth look really good, nice detail in his cowl. Uh, mine does appear to have a little bit of a, a scratch there. I don't know if you can see that. Overall, the head sculpt looks really good. So there are only four pieces. This shouldn't be a very difficult assembly, so uh, let's get this guy put together. Uh, one thing I did notice about this when I was contemplating buying this, was that the base here looked really small. Putting it down here, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. I think we might have to put his claws into this arm first. Oh, that's pretty strong magnet there. And then we can probably key this in with his other arm. Okay, and there we go. And finally, let's, uh, let's stick his head on. Here's a look at the Wolverine bust. Okay, so let's break this thing down. So starting off here at the bottom, we have a stone-like base. Uh, we've got rocks on the bottom that kind of go up and meet his back. Like most busts, it's very narrow in the middle, giving him a very slim looking waist. It looks like he scratched his own base here, and I'm glad to say that there are three claw marks on each side. They got it right there. They didn't get it right on the box, but they did get it right on the base. 
When you look from below, you can see that Wolverine does have some abs there sculpted in. So as expected, this being a Daniel Bell sculpt, uh, the musculature is very nice. You guys have seen me review some of his other stuff and his muscle anatomy and proportions are always spot on. There's also some nice texture on his arms. There's color variations within his skin to give that appearance of hair, as well as bulging tendons and veins. Uh, on his gloves, we can see some nice details in there with a leather-like texture as well as the stitching seams. He has that same leathery texture on the black stripes on his shoulders. We can also see the little stitching details in there as well. Got some folds in his neck and upper back. When it comes to the claws, I know some people were concerned that they were a little bit too long, which is usually the case with a lot of Wolverine statues. They tend to be on the longer side. His claws are supposed to be able to retract into his forearm. So technically the claws would have to be shorter than the length of his elbow to his wrist because having his claws retracted, he would not be able to move his wrist if his claws were still going into the upper part of his hand. So the actual length of the claw is about four and a quarter inches and the length of his elbow to his wrist is about three inches. So if that's something that bothers you, uh, this piece might not be for you. And finally, his portrait uh, looks really good. The teeth look good. Uh, we've got a little wet moist effect going on with his lower lip, kind of glistens in the light. He's got a slight underbite. He's got the whited out eyes. They're kind of gray in this case and the typical snarling look that we're used to seeing on Wolverine. The seams are pretty hidden towards the front of the statue. On the back, from lower you can't really see it, but from looking down you can see the seam on the back of his head. Another thing are those shoulder pads. You can see light coming through from the other side. So I'm thinking if this was real life, Wolverine shoulder pads would be completely attached to his suit. There wouldn't be any light gaps. Now depending on what kind of lighting you have or the angle that you're looking at Wolverine from, um, you're probably not going to notice it. But that is something to mention. The shoulder pads themselves look really nice. They've got little scratches on them, similar to what we saw on the Wolverine Premium format. And of course, my biggest problem is that middle claw on his right hand. With the claws in front here being so prominent, uh, it does stick out quite a bit. So I'm hoping this is an isolated case and I'm the only one that has this problem. But I might have to make a note and give Sideshow a call about that. Okay, time for the official weigh-in. Let's get him on the scale. And it says he weighs four pounds, three ounces. Okay, so that was a look at the statue. And now what I thought I'd do is take out some of my other Wolverines and compare them side by side. Okay, so here we have my Sideshow Wolverine Premium Format. I've used this guy in other comparisons as well. This guy is one four scale, meaning he's one quarter the size he would be in real life. This guy is supposed to be one third. So putting these guys next to each other, uh, it's obvious that this guy is bigger. Okay guys, so here we have the two portraits next to each other. This is the quarter scale Wolverine premium format. And here is the one from the bust. Um, as you can see, the bust portrait is a little bit bigger. However, I'm not quite sure it's uh, one third scale bigger. Here they are looking at each other and they are very similar in size. The fins on his cowl are quite a bit bigger. That could just be a design choice, not necessarily scale. The premium format does have a little bit more details right here in the brow than this one. And the texture is a little bit different as well. Looking up from the bottom, the premium format here has a much pointier nose, but I do love the lips on this guy. And here we have a look at the XM Studios Brown Wolverine portrait. Now this one was criticized for being a little bit overscaled. And here we have it next to the supposed one third scale from Sideshow. And as you can see, it is smaller than the XM. So either XM is overscaled, which I think it is, or this thing is underscaled, which I think it is as well. And finally, we have a one-third scale portrait, and this one is, of course, from the Superman Hush that I showed you guys. And let's put these guys together. Is it a one-third? Is it a one-third? Uh, not even close. Now, Wolverine's supposed to be a small guy, but um, yeah, this is not even close to being the same scale unless Superman just has a really big head. This is sort of like the little guy that wanted to be a one-third scale statue, but didn't quite make the cut. 
comparing the bodies of these two guys together, the bust is significantly larger. I mean, look at the difference in the arms alone. So I don't know if Wolverine was taking some of that Bane juice, or he has a one-third scale body and a quarter scale head. And here are a look at the claws. Uh, here is the quarter scale. And as you can see, the claws are much longer, the hands are much bigger. So I guess we can't just compare heads alone. Maybe Wolverine has a smaller head. I'll let you guys be the judge. Uh, the proportions look okay. It doesn't look like Wolverine has a small head. It just looks like he has massive arms. However, I do think it is smaller than a one-third scale statue. This would have been a must-have Wolverine if he had the full body. A life-size bust of this would have been really cool too. Uh, probably a little bit too large. Anyway, if you guys are interested in picking this up, it, it is available on Sideshow's website. It is $250. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to check it out. If you do want to buy it, please use my link. It helps support the channel. Also, make sure to subscribe to my other channel, DT's Geek Show, for more collectibles content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.